So we're in Cremole, in a little farm underneath a beautiful and healthy ash tree. And as you know, all uh, hurley sticks and all the good hurley sticks um, are made from this very fine tree. So part two of my introduction to the fairies um, happened in relation to a hurling match that you might not have been aware of. So it was one night I was coming back from the old pub and had a few jars as you do and sauntering on down the road down the wee country lane again back to the farm when as I was plodding my way down I spotted some boy leaning against a tree about halfway down the lane funnily enough about where I'd met the ferry last time turns out it was the same big fella just sitting there minding his own business leaning against the tree he takes one look at me here Need a wee favour from ye? Oh Jesus, I thought. A favour from the fairies? That's not good. You favour from the fairies and you're in a bit of trouble. They might try to spook you. They do the spooking. You can't get one over on the fairies. That's not good. So anyway, I says, how can I help you? I don't want to piss off a fairy after all. And besides, I've had a few jars. He goes, here. We need a referee. What? We need a referee. We're playing a derby match here against Derry. We don't have a referee. We've nobody to run the match. Eh, sure I might do that for you. And he goes, aye, look, I'll give you a watch. I'll give you a whistle. That's all you need. Go and referee the match. Come on, follow me through this hedge here. We'll go there. And I'm like, ah, grand. How bad going to be? I says to him, though, see at the end of the match, can I go home all right? And he goes, aye, of course you can. You've had a few jars. Just go on home after what you've refereed the final whistle grand so I follows him through this hedge now I knew this land like a back of my hand but all of a sudden I followed him into this field there was goal posts there was markings in the pitch there was even a crowd there was two teams now it wasn't Derry and Antrim like I was expecting but it was fairy team A and fairy team B anyway I was only human there they were all fairies and they're all speaking Irish to each other and the Daphne knew I wasn't one of them so the captains both said hello to me. I shook their hands. Now they were much bigger than I was. They were hurling lads and they were fairy hurling lads. I'm 6'2", now they were huge. They must have been eight foot. Tip off happened, the game started. And I tell you, Jesus, the quality of the hurling was insane. The points were flying over the bar. The goals were going in, the tackles that were getting stuck in. It was a very high quality match. It was clean too, I didn't have to book anybody. But the quality, you wouldn't have seen better outside Croke Park. You know, I blows for half time. One team, they got together in a huddle in the middle of the pitch. The other team, the other middle of the pitch. And I was a bit like Johnny No Mates in the middle. I'd had a bottle of water in my back pocket that I'd taken from the bar. So I gulped it down me. Stood around for 15 minutes doing nothing. So, second half kicks off. Ah, Jesus, the quality again. They were getting stuck into each other clean match tackles were flying but Jesus I was loving this but anyway I looks at my watch All right, there's two minutes to go this team's winning against this team by a point right what happens when I blow for full time and one team wins does that mean I've got 15 pissed off fairies coming at me I don't want one angry fairy never mind 15 of them and they have a crowd as well there's about 300 in the stand so i was thinking right if the other team score a point that makes it a draw and if i don't say anything to anybody and if i reset the timer in my watch i might just get away with it so anyway there was about a minute and a half to go and the losing team go down the pitch crack the slitter over the black spot teams are even thank god for that so the ball comes out in the play again second it goes in the play i blow for full time it was a draw i think it was about 112 to 112 jesus that'll do blew for full time and i was just really hoping <laughs> there wasn't a timer somewhere in this ferry pitch to give the game away but anyway captains come over everybody shakes my hand that's 30 happy people the crowd happy enough Everybody's grand, we a draw. The big fella comes back over to me and he goes, 
Jeez, thanks very much. That was a great match. We loved it. Sure, you're welcome back any time. Just meet me by that tree again. And you come in. You can even play a match if you want. I was nice and pleasant to him. And I said, aye, I might do that some time. You can come on the pub afterwards as well, sure. I knew I wasn't coming back anyway. So I head on through the, the wee shock again. Back out the wee lane and headed home. I was never going back to that ferry pitch again. So I goes into bed and I gets up the next morning. I went down the field again just to see if they were all still there. Nothing. The field had looked as if it hadn't been touched in about three years. We hadn't even put sheep in it. But whatever the fairies do and whatever they do in their own time, that's grand. But I'm not walking that lane again. Not this time of night. So I never went near the fairies again and I never walked down that lane after midnight again. I left them to it. And so should you. I really hope that makes sense. (laughs) 